Look at somebody and say infinite wisdom. In all you're getting. Get your OPE degree. Oh, praise God. I was going through some things in my uh, uh, bookshelf and, and I'm a new grandfather and 31 years ago when my son was born, born I took a leave of absence to, to, to write a book and the book is called The Boss. I haven't even released it yet in 30 years. The BOS, The Bible on success and, and I'm going through the, the, the scriptures praise God and, and the first chapter was infinite wisdom if you know anything about infinite somebody say it's never ending and I go to Psalms 103 and 12 when the Bible the Lord says he gives us his great promise he says as far as the east is from the west so far has the Lord removed all of our transgressions from us somebody say infinite because if you know anything about the East and the West, somebody say East and West can never connect. East and, West can never connect. and what God was put into my spirit, the word infinite is never ending. And the first principle, if you want to be successful in life, according to the Bible on success, is to realize that school is never out for the child of God. Amen. Somebody say the biggest room in the world, the room in the world. will always be the room for improvement. And God challenges all of his children to take his yoke and to, to learn of him. Praise God. And, and you're going to be learning until Jesus comes. He says in Philippians 1, 6, he who has begun a good work in us shall complete it until the day that Christ returns. So you have to get this principle of infinite wisdom down. In your scripture handout, Jesus says, whoever hears these sayings of mine, somebody say, you got to listen. And obeys them, I will compare you, I will liken you to a wise man or a wise woman who built their house on the rock. Anybody building your foundation on the rock of God's word? Praise God. And he's letting you know uh, the floods are going to come. And the winds are going to blow. We got some people in here going through a flood right now. But if you found it on the rock, you still are going to be able to stand. And one of the first stories in that book, praise God, when it talks about infinite wisdom is the story of three men who were on a boat and they were out fishing all day and the only bites that they were getting was the bites that were in their shorts <laughs> from sitting on that bench so long. And finally one of the fishermen decided that he wanted to go to the shore. So he stepped on the side of the boat and he walked across the water until he got to the shore. About 15 minutes later, the second fisherman did the same thing. He said, you know, these fish ain't biting. I'm going to go over to the shore. So he stepped on the side of the boat. And he walked across the water until he got to the shore. And finally, the one young brother still in the boat, you know what he said to himself now? If they can do it, if old school can do it. I know I can do it, but he stepped on the side of the boat and he sunk down to the bottom. Now being one not to give up easily, he climbed back in the boat and he sunk down again when he tried to go out. And finally he looked at the two older brothers on the shore. They said, we better hurry up and show him where the rocks are before that fool drowns himself. <laughs> and what the word of God does for you is to show you where the rocks are. Jesus says the first principle of being successful in life, you've got to build your life on the foundation of God's word. Anybody glad that you made a choice to come to Jesus and build your life on the rock? And when you build your life on the rock, the first principle that God teaches you is to begin with the end. Oftentimes, when I have to do homegoing celebrations, I remind people of the story of B.T. Washington. He was a great educator, and people would come from all over the world to study under his tutelage because he had such great results. But before he would allow anybody to come, he would always give an interest exam. He would say, why are you here? And oftentimes, they say, well, brother, I'm here to become a doctor. And then he would say, that's great, but what then? Well, one day I'd like to get married. 
Well, what then? Well, I'd like to have a family. Well, what then? Well, I'm going to retire. Well, what then? I'm going to get old and die. Well, what then? And he would challenge everyone as I'm challenging you today to begin with the end because if the end is well, all is. Give God praise if you've prepared. If you're going to live in the house of many mansions, how many know you got to make your reservation in advance? And I am so thankful that I made my reservation and I know that when this is over, I'm not leaving home, I'm, I'm going home. So it ain't no uh, a goodbyes, but it's I'll see you later. And you understand that we're here for a reason and we're here for a season, y'all. And God challenges all of us to number our days so that they will be filled with wisdom. Because only what we do for Christ will last. So how do you get wisdom in this world? The W in wisdom. Somebody say word wise. Word wise. The best thing you can do, y'all, if you are truly going to hear God say, well done, is to make a commitment to give a year of your life get, to get to know the Lord. I'm talking about a personal love relationship with God. I'm talking about taking time to get hooked on God's book. People in the world get hooked on all kinds of things. Some of them got their favorite reality shows. Some of them get hooked on sporting events and, and all of these types of things. And those things can be okay at certain seasons. But everybody needs to take a year of your life and the sooner the better. Amen. Amen. And get to know God and get to know these 8,000 promises that he has in the word of God just for you. And it breaks God's heart, y'all, that people can be on earth and they can go to their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Some of them even make 100. But they've never taken time to get to know God or to be able to apply his promises. And Jesus reminds us that the thief, Satan, the devil, you knock the D off of a devil and what do you have? Evil. He comes only to kill God's will. He comes only to steal your zeal and to destroy your joy. And right after that, Jesus lets you know why he came. He said, I came. I had to leave heaven to come to the earth to repair what Adam did, praise God, uh, 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 so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus is already letting you know what his will is for you. Is to have life and to have it more abundantly. And you just were handed an exercise where you looked at all areas of your life, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, in your family, in your career, and in your relationships. And many of us are living witnesses that if you just come to Jesus as you are, he can take you from the land of not enough through the land of just enough and many of us have gotten to the land of more than enough. Do I have any more than enough sitting here today? Every area! Praise God spiritually. Thank God for the promises of God. Praise God. You have to understand how rich you are. And when you get hooked on the book and you start Getting the promises of God from your head down to your heart. As the psalmist says, thy word, I meditate day and night. I'm like a tree planted by rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in my season. And the joyous part says, and whatever I do, prosper. And that prosperity, y'all ain't, ooh, my pockets got a lot, the mumps, you know. I got more money than you, so I'm more prosperous than you. Prosperity in God's eyes is whatever comes to me by the will of God. Have I got a witness? It shall be met by the grace of God. That's what prosperity is in God's eyes. And when you get hooked on the book, praise God, and you get your OPE degree and you learn from other people's experiences. When you're going through stuff like 
I remember when God called me to the ministry within months, y'all. Mom went to be with the Lord. Grandfather, my pastor went to be with the Lord. My father, my role model went to be with the Lord. But I had an OPE degree from the word of God by the name of Job. A man who had 10 children to die at once. A man who lost all of his wealth at once. A man who lost his health at once. And he gave me a blueprint or a role model, an example to know that if, if he did it before, God can do it again. If God blessed Job to go through 10 to die. And he could still say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I can go through my test and develop a testimony because of who God is. How many believe if he did it before, he can do it again? But you got to have that word in you. The devil ain't going to give you a chance to go to your car. He ain't going to give you a chance to call your pastor. You've got to have a word hidden in your heart so that you can go through the test in life. And when you get with God and you grow up in the word and you become strong in the word, you're prepared for whatever the enemy brings your way. And you'll never understand that you understand that God put us here for a reason and he put us here for a season. And we have to number our days that they will be filled with wisdom because only what we do for Christ will last. So get that word in you and allow God to take you from not enough through just enough to more than enough. And you don't pay the price. You're going to enjoy the benefits. Because he's a good God, y'all. So make sure that in all you're getting, get an understanding of God's ways. How many know his ways are higher than your ways? And his heaven is higher than the earth. So are his ways higher than our ways. And then, the next one, somebody say insight. As I go through wisdom, one of the things I love about God is that when you abide with him, he gives you insight on things to come. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that God sees the end from the beginning. Everything that goes on in your life, God has already seen how it's supposed to turn out. And if he leads you to it, how many believe he's already planned to see you through it? And it's up to you. But you got to have faith. And trust him even when you can't trace him. When God was teaching me insight, praise God, I'm reminded of the story of a, 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 a young man by the name of Solomon. I love young Solomon because when God came to him in a dream, God said, ask me what you want. In other words, if you could ask God for anything in the world, how many of us would ask him for more money? How many of us got some enemies? God, get that person back that hurt me. <laughs> and Solomon didn't ask for none of that. Solomon knew that he had a big task to take care of while he was here on earth. He just says, God, this task that you got for me is a big job, and, and what I need is an understanding heart. He was basically saying, what I need is wisdom. And I guarantee you, praise God, if you ask God for wisdom, the Bible says that anyone who lacks wisdom, ask God. Because he gives liberally to everybody that asks for it. But in this particular situation, because he asked for wisdom and an understanding heart, God was so pleased, he said, because you've asked for the right thing, I'm going to bless you with the other things like nobody else has experienced. Solomon woke up from the dream, and the next day, two harlots came to him. Somebody say prostitutes. prostitutes. And one of the harlots said, slept with her baby. And if you got wisdom, how many snow wild sleepers don't need to be sleeping with no baby? Or do I need to turn my back on y'all? <laughs> well, I'm tired. <laughs> but anyway, when she slept on the baby, she suffocated the baby. And in the middle of the night, she went and switched her baby 
in the other room with the other Harlot who had just had a baby. And they woke up the next day and the, 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 the other uh, woman knew that that wasn't her babies. So they went to Solomon. And they explained the case. Solomon, both of these ladies are saying that uh, uh, this baby is uh, theirs. And, 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 and Solomon said to one of the servants, he said, I'll tell you what, because he was flowing in God's wisdom. He said, give me a sword. And one of them gave Solomon a sword. He says, now I'm going to get ready to chop the baby in half. And I'm going to give you half, and I'm going to give you half to baby. And as Solomon raised up to chop the baby in half, what do you think the real mother said? No, 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 please, please don't kill the baby. Give it to her, give it to her. And Solomon knew right then who the real mother was. Yeah. Give her the baby. And you, get out of my face. But when you have the wisdom of God, he gives you insight. To see the end from the beginning. You see things before they're going to occur so you can be prepared for them before they even happen. That's the beauty of walking in God's presence. Anybody understand that God's presence is your greatest present? And where he guides, he's going to provide for you. And it ain't nothing like having the insight of God flowing in your life. One of my old movies growing up as a kid. Anybody remember the Karate Kid? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. Daniel's son came to him one day and he had this big hickey on his eye. And Mr. Miyagi said, well, what happened to you? And Daniel's son said, I fell off my bicycle. And Mr. Miyagi looked at him and said, lucky you didn't hurt your hands. <laughs> In other words, he knew he hadn't fell off his bicycle. He knew he had been in a fight. But when you get insight, you're able to see things ahead of time. Yeah. When people come to you with something that's too good to be true, okay. how much though, unless it's God, yeah. it usually is. And we follow the Russian proverb, you trust but you verify. And that's what insight will do to you. If you're going to have wisdom, you've got to have Somebody say smart. smart. Got to be smart, y'all. And that's what I love about the wisdom of God. It prepares us for the end of life so that we will have a happy ending. And, 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 and you get to your point in your life to where when you even set goals like we're challenging you to do today on your wheel of life, uh, uh, you got to set specific goals. Yeah. How much know if you try to do everything at the same time, you'll end up not doing anything. Right. I have to remind you, when it comes to even setting goals, life is like an all-you-can-eat buffet. You got a lot of choices, but you can't eat it all at the same time. So if you're going to work on one area, work on that area and get that area up, and then you can go to the next area. But we got too many people try to do everything at once. And, and when I was a child, praise God, straight out of college, I had this business card, y'all. And it was James Parker Broker. And I could get anything you want. I said, now if you, if you want cars, I'll take you to the auto auction. If you want furniture, I'll take you to the World Trade Center. You need clothes, I'll take you to the Apparel Mart. You need food, I'll take you to Chef's Wholesale. And my father looked at that business card. He said, son, you're going to starve to death. <laughs> if you try to do any, everything at the same time, you'll end up not doing anything. You can't chase too many rabbits at the same time. You got to put your eye on one of them. And when you're 18 or 22 coming out of college, you know, you say, but well, dad, that was in your day. Now we got computers, you know, and we can... I heard the president once say, I can walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. <laughs> but like Will Rogers said, when I was young, you couldn't believe how dumb my daddy was. Mm -hmm. But as we get older, it's amazing how smart the father is. How much know the father knows what he's doing? Yeah. So you learn to be specific in what you're going to try to do. The light of the body is the eye. If the eye is single, the whole body is full of light. You didn't did magnifying glasses before. How many of us ever put one in, 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 in on paper? And as long as you hold it still, it'll burn a hole in that paper. 
But if you're moving it around, you ain't going to get nothing. And God wants us, praise God, to be focused, to seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And the promise from God says, and all these other things will be added unto you. How much know that can't nobody take care of you like God? That ain't even your job. He done already let you know he is your provider. Amen. He's your protector. Amen. He's, he's your priest. Yes. And he's your procreator. But you got to have an insight to let God be God. Yes. See, that was the problem with Adam and Eve in the garden. God didn't put them in a perfect paradise. Let them have everything that they wanted. And then God said, I tell you what. The only one thing I don't want you to do, you can eat from every tree, but this one tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Now, if you've read Where Do You Stand, and the question is asked, why doesn't God destroy the devil? You know the answer to this. The reason that the devil is here today, God wants us to love, trust, and obey him, not because we have no choice. God wants us to love, trust, and obey him. Why? Because he is our choice. He could easily destroy the devil right now. But because you are created in God's own image, you got to have a choice between good and bad. Right and wrong. Jesus and the devil. And God challenges you to be smart about it. The devil is going to always come to us, y'all, with short-term gain, but he don't tell us about what? The long-term long pain. And how much know when you were children, you'd fall for the short-term game? Because it's right here. But what God has for you is not a fast food meal, y'all. It's a Thanksgiving feast. And it takes time. I even hate to go to these fast food restaurants. How much went to one of them? I was at one the other day, just wanted a little snack. And by the time I ordered at the window, before I could even pay for it. She handed it out to Wenda. That wasn't no fresh meal. That thing been sitting under a heat lamp for no, no telling how long. Man, if that's all you want in life, it don't take nothing for that. But what God has for you is the very, very best. And he wants you to be smart about that. To, 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 to not try to do everything at the, the same time. The D. Somebody say decisive discernment. When you got the word of God, y'all, it's not hard to make decisions because you know when the lion has roared, who will not fear? The word says the sovereign God has spoken, who can but prophesy. So you have the discernment about things. People will tell you what the world thinks and, and, and how God ought to want everybody to do this and everybody to do that. But God is a sovereign God. And when you know the word, when God speaks, you just do what God tells you to do. Amen. Mary gave us the secret at the wedding in Cana. Again, I go back to that wedding when they ran out of wine and, and, and Mary pressed Jesus to get involved with this. And after Jesus said, my time has not come, obviously... He helped his mother out. And Mary went to the servants and gave us the secret to success in life. She told the servants, do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Do I have anybody that made up your mind? I'm doing what the Lord tells me to do. Don't have to make sense to me. If he says, duck, I'm ducking. If he says, go, I'm going. If he says, be quiet, I'll be quiet. Because where he guides, he provides. Amen. And life gets to be very simple, y'all, when we can just have decisive discernment. When we can see the devil coming with this short-term gain. But we know it's coming with a lot of long-term pain. He loves to get you off track like he did Eve. First of all, she shouldn't have been talking to no snake anyway, amen? <laughs> so we got some folks. They like them bad boys, like them bad girls. And, and, you know, people love flattery, you know, to tell you what you think you might be. 
she ate it, gave it to Adam and he ate it. And when God came, did he come to Eve or did he come to Adam? Yeah. He came straight to Adam. Because when they opened up, they ate it, the eyes was open and they were naked and they became ashamed. So God knew they had done something. And the first thing Adam did is what folks do when they mess up in life, the blame game. Lord, let me tell you about that woman you gave me. <laughs> then he went to Eve. Lord, let me tell you about that snake you made. And of course, the snake didn't have a leg to stand on. But we got to get past that in our decision-making process. And we got to do what the Lord wants us to be. Because the greatest power you got in life is your power to make the right choices. And you have to choose today who you're going to serve. I can't speak for you, but I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 The O. Somebody say obedience. obedience. And it's not just obedience, it's omnipresent obedience. And omnipresent simply means that the Lord is with us at all times. Now he done told us in the word, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now when you was in the world, you didn't want the Lord to be with you all the time, did you? <laughs> but once you grow up, one of the best blessings you got is that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And, and when we just make up our mind to realize that, that, that partial obedience is, is disobedience, all we got to do is to do it exactly the way God tells us to do it, and, and we'll get the results that he wants us to get. But sometimes, y'all, we can be casual in our obedience. And the only thing you get by being casual, you end up being what? A casualty. A lot of folks will say they're going to get with God tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How much hell is going to be full of folks that was going to get with God tomorrow? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm reminded again of Pharaoh with the plague of the frogs. And when God had made up his mind to let his people go, wasn't nothing going to stop God from not letting them go? He had made up his mind that they were going to be free and he levied all these plagues on Egypt. And Pharaoh's heart got hard. It got up to the plague of the frogs, y'all. And I don't know about you, if you've ever been around frogs, can you imagine frogs everywhere? You open up the door and frogs is just everywhere in your kingdom. And finally Pharaoh said, Moses, Moses, please come. Tell God to get rid of these frogs. They're everywhere. And Moses said to Pharaoh, would you be so kind, Pharaoh, to tell me when you want me to get rid of these frogs. And Pharaoh thought about it. He said, tell God to get rid of the frogs tomorrow. He wanted one more day with the frogs. And I say this in love, y'all, because God's heart's desire is no one goes unsaved. Yeah. And there's a wonderful song that we sang here from time to time called Tomorrow. It simply says you better choose the Lord today because your tomorrow may very well begin today. Some people are going to miss heaven because they were going to get saved tomorrow. And tomorrow became today. And God's challenge for you is to get to know him today. <clears throat> and finally the M, somebody say is maturity. maturity. And in God's sight it's called magnanimous maturity, the chapter in the boss, magnanimous maturity. And the word magnanimous means, uh, uh, praise God, that even though you're a strong, you're like Jesus, you act meek. How many know meekness is not weakness? but it's strength under control. Any fool can go off. Oh, my man, nobody talk to me like that. Yeah, you'll be in jail. Yeah. But you have to know when to be strong and when to keep your mouth shut. When to speak, as the Bible says, be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to get angry. 
And when you grow up in maturity, again, the word maturity means that you become complete, you become whole, and you become what God wants you to be. You make a decision to not only abide with God, but to be like the Apostle Paul when he said, I'm persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Can you receive it today? That's what it's all about. Father, we thank you for infinite wisdom today. We thank you, Father, that school is never out for a child of God, that the biggest room in our world will always be the room for improvement. The greatest difference is the difference between where we are and where we can be when we surrender all of our life to thee. Take each of us, Father, from all of me and none of thee through some of me and some of thee to all of thee and none of me. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Amen. amen. If you're not ashamed to praise his name, give the Lord a praise offering.